Hi there, I'm Adam Morgan and this video intends to inspire you to create your own environment using Unreal Engine. Sometimes as designers we feel starved of creativity if we're working to a boring project or a quite constrained site um, and sometimes I need to just break free from all that and work on something independent, something that I want to enjoy. And I've recently found that Unreal Engine is an amazing place to do just that. Okay, so we start in SketchUp and what we're doing is we're just exporting it to a Datasmith and dropping it into Unreal. We've created a new level so that we can add our wonderful sky system. And the sky system is called Ultra Dynamic Sky. And that can be found on the on um, the Epic Marketplace, sorry. Now I'm just, just checking the glass material, that's the first thing to do when you're importing from SketchUp, it's just, it's the material that kind of comes in the, the worst. Um, and then I'm just jumping to Quixel to get myself some assets ready to populate the scene and have some fun. Unreal Engine benefits from a massive library of assets through Quixel Megascans and it's an inbuilt plugin called Quixel Bridge and you can utilize this to create massive open worlds, you can use it to create uh, alien lands and in this instance I've opted for a collection called Tundra Environments and in that I'm, um, I I'm placing Farnsworth House um, just in a, in a completely random world to just test um, what, what sort of outputs we can create. So with our assets downloaded, we then want to drag and drop them in. And this is a process called kit bashing, where you just got these series of you know, quite similar assets, but obviously there's enough variation in them. And you just start to cram them together, overlap them, and you end up with quite an impressive environment. And what I'm doing here is just, just importing a, a gigantic version. It's quite low pixel, low poly. Um, but then that just gives us something to block out against. And then I use the more detailed elements to then just really populate the scene and start to add life to it. The point here is that we're not trying to create anything too photo real or too accurate. We are trying to literally have fun with an amazing piece of kit at our disposal as designers to inspire us of what can be possible on our next project. With our scene roughly blocked out, we then want to create a camera. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is get the Get your viewport roughly in the right place and use the burger menu top left and hit create camera here. Then you want to pilot the camera, set it to a 30mm lens, that's quite a realistic looking lens, and then set your focus method to tracking so that no matter where the camera moves, it'll always be focusing on the subject because eventually we want to create some some little mini animations and we wanted to track the subject with a nice little sense of of depth of field so and the cameras in unreal engine are absolutely excellent you'll love them a couple of massive advantages for unreal engine is one it's a free piece of software so there's nothing stopping you getting started today and number two is that it, its render times are incredibly quick so there are a lot of people now who, who can create amazing stills um, but you can really set yourself apart by creating beautiful animations of your projects and again that, that is something that I want to kind of inspire you to do because there is no better way to demonstrate your project. We then move into the post process volume and you can just see the drop down menu there and it's, a, it's in the visual effects category and this controls a huge amount of um, aspects of your scene. You can just see there, we're scrolling through a few. I just invite you to pause the video and just, just mimic some of the settings I'm, um, I'm you know, altering you know, from, from the quality settings within the scene using the Lumen global illumination settings. You can adjust the reflection quality. You can adjust the bloom amount, lens flare, things like that. And they're just, just messing with the reflections there, reflection settings. And then you can change things like the, the color grading uh, within the scene. That's obviously what we're moving into now. And 
you know, this is all about getting creative. So once to create a really moody scene, we'll end up adding tons of fog and, and things like that. And it, it, it just, you know, say it's just about pushing the boundaries, getting creative, making a really interesting image that you want to create. With the scene set, we want to utilize some of Unreal Engine's uh, amazing inbuilt tools. And there's no better way to make an image or an animation look better than water. So let's jump into that. One of the most interesting aspects when you create an environment in Unreal Engine is the water. Now first you need to go into the landscape mode and create a, a landscape surface because the water needs something to kind of attach itself to. So we're just creating a very basic surface there. You then need to enable two plugins as shown and you need to restart the engine and when you're loaded in you then go you then just search in the place actors uh, window you just search for lake or ocean or something like that i've dropped the lake in and then you just adjust the positioning and then you could there's there's a million and one settings um at the minute you can see the waves are crazy um so just adjusting the position um and again just i just encourage you to pause the video and just rifle through um, some of these settings that I'm adopting here to just match the, the settings I'm going for. Say this lesson isn't, isn't necessarily a step-by-step. -step. It's trying to inspire you guys to, to use Unreal Engine. It's, I say it's a really good program and, and it's something that I think you can really, you know, uh, run wild as the title says with with your creativity sometimes we're we're hindered um with with certain constraints on projects i find that this is just a great place to to really just let loose and just remind yourself how 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 good we we, we can have it as as creators and, and designers so you can see they're just just messing with with some of the settings and i've actually re-brought in the the low poly landscape i'm using that to just drop it under the water to create depth Another really impressive facet of Unreal Engine is the ability to paint foliage directly onto your scenes. Um, it's so accurate, it's so detailed, and in some cases as well, the, the, the grass and things is, is animated, and you'll see that shortly with the trees. So what you do is you go into foliage mode. You bring in foliage from uh, either Quixel or, or places like the, um, the Epic, Epic Marketplace. You go into the static meshes within your content browser and then you tick things on and off. You change scale settings, you change brush settings and then you can just paint away. So I'm just painting um, just 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 kind of weedy type grass. We're going for a we're going for a sort of alien looking world, like a, you know, like a, a tundra setting. So it's not a particularly lush landscape. So I'm just putting the odd the odd little bit of grass around and it really adds to the to the depth and, and, and realism of the scene. It really does um, it really does animate it. So then now what we're doing is we're just we're just looking for a tree. Nothing again, nothing too leafy, just something that is um, is something that's you know quite quite in keeping with, with the scene. Um, so just just me messing with the scale settings. And what happened there is um, it's a, it's aligned to the normal of the landscape. So you need to tick a line normal off. You need to set that to false, which is the kind of the lingo in, in Unreal Engine. And um, you can then just, it, it aligns it vertically and you can then just populate the scene with just a handful of trees using the single brush setting. I think it's sensible to replace materials as well um, when they're imported from another software. So I jump into Quixel Bridge, which is inbuilt into Unreal Engine, which again is, is absolutely amazing. And then what I do is I jump into the the root material that's been imported using Datasmith and I change the parent material so it replaces all of them within the scene. Um, so I'm just being quite liberal with my material choices and the, 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 the kind of the scaling of the UVs. Just want to make sure that the materials are realistic enough because yeah, we're, we're going to be focused on exteriors really but we just want to make sure that the interior looks convincing enough before we then move into the rendering aspect. The result of this video wants to be some nice animated clips. That's kind of what, well, one of the main benefits of using Unreal Engine. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually migrating render settings from our Unreal Engine course so I can recycle them into this scene. Um, now, before we can animate a camera, what we need to do is we need to create a level sequence because that's where the camera 
uh, will live and that's kind of the inst- that's the place where you give it the instruction so we create a level sequence we drag and drop the camera in and to animate the camera's movement you just go to frame zero you keyframe the location at that point you then go to the end of the timeline you then move the camera along one of the axes and then you put another keyframe at the end that's what animates the the camera movement we then use our um, our render preset that we've created in another project and then we just hit we find our output sorry we find our location and then we hit render local to then finish us off just want to um, touch on some other options that are available to you so with the ultra dynamic sky there's also ultra dynamic weather and that is in built and you just need to find that in your content browser and you just drag the blueprint into the scene you can then use a series of presets I've got like a heavy rain one turned on at the minute. I think that looks very interesting. And I'm just populating the interior with a, with a few lights. Um, I'm also adding some trees into the background to accentuate the uh, the reflections on the glass of our Farnsworth house that we've dropped in the middle of nowhere. Um, just making a few little tweaks to the glass settings just to really make that glass a bit more punchy. And then while it's raining, I also found a really interesting glass pack on the Epic Marketplace and it's called Advanced Glass Materials and it has this really nice animated uh, raindrops on the windows. And again, I just, just think that's just such a really nice nice thing to experiment with. And although other, other softwares do kind of have this setting, I just think there's nothing more realistic than, than Unreal Engine. And one, one of the byproducts of this video is I want to try and encourage you guys to to uh, to use this software because it, it is intimidating at first but once you get the hang of it um it, it, it isn't as complicated as, as it first seems and the results are absolutely amazing and again if you know if you're finding yourself a little bit a little bit restricted on certain projects and you want to just let loose and get the creative juices flowing i would really invite you to to use this this program and at this point it's fitting to, to, to see that what, what I'm demonstrating here is all those different presets in the weather settings. I just think it's it's absolutely amazing. And this this level of realism and this level of dynamism, I think is, is unique to Unreal Engine. So, get creating guys. Thanks for watching. And I hope this video has motivated you to create something spectacular for your next project. And I hope that it's reminded you how powerful you are as a designer and a creator.